Have you ever been so fascinated with something that you actually become obsessed? I'm your host, Avery Brooks, and today we are going to meet a man whose fascination with street sweepers turned into a lifelong passion. This is the story of Kenny Page, a writer, a builder, an actor, and inventor. Kenny has spent his life working with street sweepers. He has created several amazing models that we will see today. We will take you in to talk with Kenny about his unique story. It's all coming up next, right here on Golden Isles TV. Hi, and welcome back to Golden Isles TV. I'm your host, Avery Brooks, and I'm here with Kenny Page. This is the story of Kenny Page and all of his amazing models. Um, Kenny, thank you so much for being with us today. Mm -hmm. My pleasure, uh, Miss Brooks. <laughs> um, we are so excited to see these models, and we're going to go in and see some larger models in just a minute. We're also going to go out, and he's going to demonstrate um, these functioning models of street sweepers outside. But first, Kenny, um, tell me a little bit about when you discovered street sweepers. When you were a child living oh, in New Jersey, yes. tell me about when you first discovered street sweepers. This is going to make you laugh. I'm in the backyard playing in the mud, uh, uh, putting the mud pile with uh, my neighbor Janice Williams. We were making mud cakes, you know, mud cakes. And then for some reason, I, I, I heard this, this unfamiliar noise. It's a different type of noise. And I just paused there as it was getting louder and louder. And Janice was asking me, um, like, what's the matter? What is it? I wouldn't say nothing. So I ran to the uh, to the gate as the noise came closer. I had to look out, and I saw a gray and yellow machine. Didn't know what it was. The gray, and one, the gray and yellow machine come out, made a right, and just came on down the street. And I just stood there watching it, just watching. My eyes were just riveted on the toy, I mean on the machine. And I was like, wow, you know, and um, from that time on, uh, I've been fascinated. I would always uh, um, uh, tune in when they come around from on the street. In fact, nobody doesn't know this, but um, I played hooky. I had cut class a couple of times just to go and watch these things. And as I got a job uh, with the city of Newark years ago, um, I used to work for them driving a sweeper, but when I found out in like uh, another township that they had an old, old gasoline uh, a sweeper, I went up there, I drove up there, took the day off, caught out sick, drove <laughs> up there just to see and sit and watch that thing go. And after the, after the guys noticing me a lot about that, they finally had me go in and sit down in the cab and drive it. So yeah, I um, I that's that's me. You got people that like playing trains, uh, basketball, football, all kind of sports and all kind of you know um, uh, uh, arts and crafts. Me, this is my this is my world. This is your world. And so, how old were you when you first saw? Like, were you four, four, four years old? Four. Okay, and you asked your mother for a street sweeper. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I asked her for it, and she did go out and look for it, but there was none. Right. So, you know, after asking and asking, she said, why don't you make your own? And I looked at her puzzle, make my own. Like, how? So, um, she said, I don't know. I'm gonna, if you make your own, and do it your way. So I began following them around and see what goes where, what uh, turns this and that, and um, I um, I started making them. Like of course I got frustrated. I would start on it, then it wouldn't come out the way I want, so I throw it away and then I in the garbage and I pick it up out of the garbage after about four hours and do it again. And I kept on, kept on, kept on till it, I modified it real good to my liking. So, but first you um, you went across town to a junkyard, you photographed these, 
and then you drew them. Is it were you able to make the model from your drawing or from the photograph? From both. Both. Both of them. Both. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, one time I almost lost my life um, in the um, in the, watching these things in the yard. It was one um, January, uh, the first or the second. We were like uh, three degrees. I was bored. I walked out to the yard. Um, I climbed the fence where all the old sweepers, the 40s and 50s and 60s were all, all through the graveyard. So I climbed the fence, jumped over, not knowing and, and not realizing that there was a frozen pond below me and I crashed right through. All this here for a street cleaner, okay? Oh my. I, I held on to some weeds, pulled myself up. My pants were like frozen. So I'm walking back, back home, <laughs> walking now, I drive, walking back home. Uh, my mother saw me, she saw me walking in like that, I was walking into the house like Frankenstein. She said, well, what happened to you? Uh, I uh, fell into a pond. She said, over a street sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> so of course I got blessed out and whatnot, but she uh, immediately uh, rubbed my legs down with hot water and alcohol and uh, I was all right, but I didn't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, you have got you. So you started making them. You said you were frustrated at first, but you finally got oh, yeah. got it the way you wanted it, mm -hmm. and then you kind of took off making all kinds of different models. And tell me, um, over the years, how many models you've made? How many are in your collection today? Ooh. All together. All together. Mm, about. Uh, I mean, you're looking about the ones that I'm going to keep. About 250. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I have uh, about 100 and uh, something now, but my, my special collection will be about 250. Actually, a 66 model. And I used to, like, uh, used to have, we used to live on, a, on a, a dead end street. So it would never come out on a dead end street. It would always come out elsewhere there on the street above us. But you can always hear it because it had a distinct sound to it. And uh, one day I just got up and stuff falling it around. <laughs> so um, I started making these kind of models, which I have like about 20 of these. So these are sort of the vintage, I guess yes. you could say, the vintage models. Mm -hmm. And some of these are look like some of the newer ones. Right. Can you um, turn that on for me real quick? Let's just hear the sound. <laughs> yeah, I just it's just, uh, it's a real live street sweeper. Yes. Well, let's start off with the Swartz. This is a, a Swartz sweeper. You would see this in parking lots all the time. I used to work for a company out there in um, Hackensack, New Jersey, and uh, they had swords, the 210 swords, and they had the 210 tent calls. And mine is where the, the strongest, where the swords, they know how to sweep. So I, uh, I had one called uh, Mr. Lucky. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> that was the sweeper that, the, the swords sweeper that I had, I had at the time, but uh, it, uh, one thing about this here, it has a uh, that good ability. Oops, that good ability. So it's uh, a good ability right here. You just push it. So um, I have the brush with your brush rip because you see them all the time with, with Dixie or um, Walmart. Then you have the, the squash decal here, you got it in the back, and you have it on the side. So this is a, a colorful toy, and it does, it does sweep, it does work. Um, um, when I used to work for the county, they had, a, they had an old Elgin, so I used to drive that, but when I left, they came up with Tempo. The city has, has a Tempo. And the county has a Tempo. So as you can see, both the city the city labels on here. City of Brunswick. City of Brunswick. And also Glen County. Glen County. So um, I believe in sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Equal opportunity. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, uh, it does it does sweep and pick up. Very loud noise. And I'm gonna perform that in a minute. In a minute. Now, you may not hear me, but uh, uh, you're about to hear some noise.
amazing. Well, I forgot to tell you, the back door does open up when it picks up stuff. It dumps the, um, the debris onto the ground. This is a remote control elder made out of wood. Yeah, made out of wood, not cardboard, mm -hmm. made out of wood. And um, I have made, when I first started making models, I made them out of wood. But wood is heavy, very, very heavy. So if you have a, a, a light model, uh, you go real, um, if you want the, the model to work more efficiently, and if you want it to um, be more, have to save more battery power, go with a lighter uh, material. Because wood will make it heavier and it'll just drain out your battery power. Just drain it right out. Mm. I like the classic vintage look. Yeah, um, that is, that's just that obviously, the, you know, the newer ones are probably 10 times more efficient and they look great. And we're going to show some pictures of those um, that are in existence today. But I, I like the classic yeah. old vintage models. Now, I want to tell you something about um, um, the vintage ones. The old uh, Elgin Street King, which I brought for like $700, and I spent like about $6,335 just to see it run. And when I bought that, uh, when I fixed it up, I wrote in my old neighborhood just to go up and down, try to re regroup what I lost years ago by going to school. Tell me about, speaking of your past, you are, you are um, an inventor. And, and you build these, but you're also an actor. Weren't you in a movie? Yes, I, I was um, um, one commercial about eight independent films. And um, I plan to do another one later on uh, down the line with Miss Avery Brooks from down, down again. We, we're going to work on that. And um, um, I, I wrote. I think 2008, I wrote, produced, directed my own independent film. I'm in the Writers Guild as well as the Actors Guild. So um, I will be looking for potential actors and actresses <laughs> later on. Well, Kenny, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. In a minute, we are going to go in and see some larger models, and then we're going to go outside, and Kenny's going to actually demonstrate some of the models outside for us. So uh, join us again in a moment. Everybody, welcome back. We're we're here with a live street sweeper that Kenny has built, um, and he's showing us how it actually works and functions. So tell us about it, Kenny. These are some of the sweepers that um, I used to follow around in the city of uh, Newark and the city of Brunswick. And the fact that the city of Brunswick had uh, two different type of wanes. They um, they had the the older style back in the sixties, and then they had these styles right here. And when you go down to the old city garage, uh, some of the old guys still remember the old Wayne's. So this is a, um, a memory of the old uh, Newark and Brunswick street sweepers. This is an old model of the Elgin White Wing. The Elgin Company only made nine of these models. I have one. So this is a rare uh, Elgin uh, white wing that they uh, made, and they only made a certain amount. Um, it has the same old style fashion that the Street King have, the old hydraulics. So this here runs, performs just like the Street King, it's just that the back of it is formed differently. So mm -hmm. I... Uh, more compact. More compact. I like her mm -hmm. choice of words. <laughs> It's very technical. Ooh. <laughs> it also, yeah. 
and you're not going to find this at Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kenny, for demonstrating this inside. We're going to head outside to um, to have Kenny actually use the remote control and show us how it works on the street. So stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. That's the city of Brunswick sweeper back in the 60s. Street sweepers are fascinating, but they also play an important role in the environment in all communities throughout the world. Street sweepers clean up debris, which keeps our streets clean, and our water safe for drinking, and our communities welcoming for visitors any time of the year. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us again next time for more Golden Isles TV.